Hey, it's Peter from the Film Scoring Department. I'm going to be changing some of my document settings in Finale today, and I want to save them as a library so that I can move those settings to another Finale document or start new documents with those settings. I'm going to start with the Launch Window. From the File menu, you can choose Launch Window, or you can choose uh, click on the keyboard Shift Command N, or your Finale might be set so that it it actually brings up the launch window when you open the program. This is Finale 2014. It works the same in Finale 2012. I'm going to use the Setup Wizard to make a very simple new document as an example. I'll use Create New Ensemble. I'm going to, for the style, I'll choose the Engrave style and I'll leave the size settings for this letter size that it defaulted to. And in the next window here, I'm just going to add one blank staff to use as an example. And I'll make up a title for this. Um, which will be inserted automatically when the document's made. I have a chance here to change the meter and key and the tempo. And uh, what I'm going to do today is something that I have to do a lot when I make scores for film cues that will be conducted uh, from a podium. I need large sized time signatures made in a large font and spaced appropriately for that. And those kinds of settings, font settings, are in document options. Document, document options, or alternatively, option command A. This brings up a window with a lot of options here on the left side. And these are specific to this particular piece of this, this file. Today, what I'm going to work with is fonts. On this third pull down menu here, there's a lot of options. Different fonts are used throughout the document. They've separated the time signature for the score and the time signature for the parts. I like the default setting for the parts, the standard smaller size. So I'm not going to change that. I'm going to select score. It's telling me what is selected by default. Maestro font, 24 size with no changes to the style. That's what that looks like. And the score, choosing set font. And a score, a standard on a film score, it's a different font called Engraver Time because it's a big sans serif. And the size I find useful is 60 point. Certainly you could experiment with different fonts and sizes. You can see that it's changed here indicating that I made a change. And when I click OK, we see the change. Right away you're going to notice it looks like there's only one number in my time signature, which is would be wrong. And that has to do with the spacing between the numbers. They're actually not spaced far enough apart for this size font. I'm going to go back to the same place. Document, Document Options. And way down near the bottom here, there's a separate tab for time signatures that has some settings about, um, you know, abbreviating 2-4 time to a, a cut time or 4-4 four, four time to a common time. But what I'm concerned with is the vertical adjustment, that's the space in between. I've done some experimenting and I've found that if in the score column, change the top symbol to the number 2. 
Actually, maybe make it a little less in this case. 1.75. I don't want them too far apart. What this is changing is the space the top, between the top one and the bottom one, measured, in this case, in inches. And you can see it's put this big spacing here. I know in this example, using one stave, this might this might look a little funny to you um, because it's, it's more commonly used in a full score with a lot of instruments. But I wanted to make an example that's easy to show. And when you do a full score with a lot of instruments, you have to do a second process of removing the time signature from some of the staves so that they're not all piled up and that there aren't too many of them. I have a second video about that process and I'll put the link for it in the description. Last thing I want to do is save these settings, the font and the font size for the time signature and the spacing for the time signature. And there's one way to just save all of the document settings as a simple little package that you can move from document to document or to start documents with. Finale saves this as a library. You go to the file menu. And you choose save library. By the way, Another way to get here, I'm going to hit cancel and just show you another way. If we had been a step back and we were looking at document options still, you can actually see that there's, there's a, a load and a save library available right in this window. It's the same thing as the option available under the file menu. It takes you to this same window here. And the the checkbox for document options is already checked in this case because it's the last thing that I used. And that's what you want checked. Uh, if you checked any other things in this list, it would save those document options too in this one thing. And since it's possible to load more than one library for a document, I tend to keep them separate so that I have options later when I'm loading these into documents. Document options. I'm going to show you the path to find where Finale 2014 installs these by default. But you actually could save this anywhere on your computer, anywhere convenient for you to get to and to move around with a project. You go to your user, the user library, application support, make music, Finale 2014, libraries and you'll see some folders and some uh, libraries here for all the defaults and you can save it in a folder or in however you want I don't I don't hide the extension the extension is lib my doc options you can call it whatever you want Now I can load that in another document and these settings will come up and I'll demonstrate that. I'm going to close this document. I'll save it in case I need it at a future date. I'm going to start again with the launch window. Go through the same steps in this case. You can do this with any document, even a document that you've already created you could move these settings into. It's just the title I'm making up. If I want those settings, the settings that I where I've changed the font size and the font spacing and the font itself, File, Load Library. It's going back to the path where I was before, where I had already saved my doc options. You can see, as soon as it's loaded them, those settings are now active. 